Hello! Welcome to the Call for Creativity podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 89. You can find me online everywhere as Caroline. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry, the works, you know it. I have a brand new web shop that will open next week. You can find it at colorfulcreativity.nl and there is a Ravelry group for this podcast, the Colorful Creativity Group, and you can find it in the group section on Ravelry. Welcome everyone, welcome back to all returning viewers and a warm welcome to all new viewers. I hope you like it here and stick around, subscribe down below. I'm very happy you are all spending a little bit of your time of your day with me. So, uh, yeah, I know I look quite festive. Um, I don't every time I record, I know that. But I thought it would be a shame that if I look in my party dress and my makeup on this good, uh, not to record today. So I'm in a bit of a hurry. I only have about 40 minutes uh, because then Robert will come home and then my mom will come because we're gonna go out for dinner and celebrate that my mom has finally officially retired. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. My mom doesn't have to work anymore. Um, she did very hard work, uh, she was a cleaning lady in schools and her health was not agreeing with it and we're very happy that she finally reached the age of retirement and that she can enjoy uh, her free time. She's a caretaker of my gran so yeah, uh, she doesn't have a lot of free time still but she doesn't have to go to work besides taking care of my grandmother. My grandmother being her mother, so she lives across the street and she goes there like three, four times a day. And my gran even calls her in between if she's really coming and if she maybe could come another time extra and it's really rough. My gran is getting worse, but she's still here and we love her, so. I also go there like I try it twice a week and we Robert and I take care of admin stuff and things that have to be on a computer and such so but that's not why we're here we're here because it's a festive reason and because I have knits to show so let's start with my finished object right away looky looky I have finished my ripple bralette yeah, I think it fits about one boob when you put it like this, but seriously, the stretch is amazing. I have posted pictures of this already on Instagram and I will pop them in here because I'm not going to put it on. Um, I won't be going out in this thing alone. There has to be stuff layered over it because otherwise I'm, I'm still in a little village. Seriously, no. This was a lot of ribbing and I added about five or six inches to the body to uh, yeah, accommodate for bigger boobs and a little bit of a roll down here so it would fit me correctly and the way I like it to fit so my boobs wouldn't fall on the underside and drop out, whatever. Um, the pattern, the ripple bralette, is by Jessie May D Designs or Jessie May, and um, it's absolutely lovely. And immediately after finishing this, I bought the crop top uh, pattern, which is basically also this but with sleeves or with uh, a little bit wider bands. This is like a six stitch I cord and those are like a bit broader for the shoulders i think that's nicer for me and then i would make it longer and it's also to be worn with a positive ease instead of a lot of negative ease like this one so you can just wear it like a crop top but i would make it a little bit longer probably to wear it like a top or maybe add a bit more sleeves for a nice sweater I really love that deep v-neck that her patterns have, so there will be more. Um, 
The yarn I used was Unicover Otter yarn. I started with Jello and then I used uh, Hayride, which was a Halloween hex exclusive, like Unicover Otter called it. And then for the straps, I faded back into the Jello and made those in Jello. In total, I used, I think it was about 130 or 140 grams of yarn. So I had 90 grams of the hay ride. I only had 10 grams left. So it was a good choice that I did two colors because one ball of yarn wouldn't have been enough. So yeah, lovely, lovely knit. And I think really everyone is knitting a ripple bralette at the moment so it is a great thing for a real bralette feeling and wearing it without a bra i would probably knit a size smaller even than this one i knit the size uh yeah it was 48 to 50 i'm a 49 and then you have like 39 inches i believe um, so about 10 inch of negative ease, I would even go down. I also knitted on a smaller needle. I knitted on a three and a half millimeter higher, higher sharp, I think, or 3.25 millimeter. I will have blended it in. Um, I went down needle size because it was too loose. And um, I just really like a nice tight gauge. And then I have progress on whips in my own colorful creativity bag. I have my Not Today tank top. And Not Today tank top is a test knit for skin and guns. And the lovely Melissa. Um, it's bunched up on the needles, but here you can see the front. And this is why it's called Not Today, because there's a knot in the back of the tank top. It has a low fit and uh, it's a layering piece, like Melissa says. I didn't expect it when I signed up and I thought it would be a nice fitted one. That was totally my fault for not asking and just finishing one testing it and signing up for the next one right away but I am struggling after three knits with just plain stocking that in the round to finish this one uh, I have about four inch to go so not that far out I'm at 14 inch from the underarm and it's just um, because of my boobs and I didn't put in any uh, bust adjustments it's just hanging too short at the front and already nice and long in the back. And that's something I recently learned that you can uh, put in bust darts in your knitting. And that's totally new, mind blowing and, and everything. And if you want to know more and you speak German, I can totally recommend Anja Loves Knits, her uh, episode specifically on plus size knitting. Uh, it's all in German and she shows all her garments she knitted and she explains how that works with the bust darts that you just put in a little short row triangle and she also recommended a book. And okay, this is going ahead to the uh, acquisitions uh, part, but this is the book. Short Row Knits, a master workshop with 20 Learn as You Knit Projects by Carol Feller. I got it on Book Depository and it was absolutely not expensive and I even had a coupon of 10% off so seriously this is worth the investment I still have to read it <laughs> but um, seeing things like this short rope is shaping I immediately went to the right place this is why I got the book this is what I want to learn and uh, yeah that's what I'm gonna read. So that is already an acquisition. You already saw that now. Um, this knit was supposed to be knit on a four millimeter needle. 
I'm knitting it on a three and a half millimeter needle because my gauge came out way too loose and I was knitting a size 64 inch instead of a size 50. I put it on a uh, scrap yarn instead of the needle I blocked it and it came out totally wrong so I ripped it and I started again. There is a bit of difference because this bit has been blocked and has been knit on a four mil and this one has not been blocked but has been knit on a three and a half but I'm fine with that. Nobody will notice when I'm wearing it. The color is loud enough to hide it. Uh, I'm looking forward to wearing this. Uh, it's gonna be a heat wave in the Netherlands this weekend so I really hope I can. I don't have that much yarn left. My cake just dropped, so I'm trying to get it up with my feet. Uh, this is what I had left. So I hope I can finish. I will just knit until I have no yarn left, probably. If I have to play yarn chicken, it will just be as is. And if I have enough, that's nice. I'm not gonna worry. As you can see, this is the ripped yarn on the outside. I caked it again and that one was already falling apart. So we got it in a nice little ball. Uh, the yarn is Colorful Sock in an experimental colorway. When I get new dyes, I like to experiment by throwing it on yarn and see how it works. This is a bleeder, so not use too much of that dye. What's the message? So yeah, this is what I have been knitting on mainly. And I do have two other projects, but I'm not going to show you because we're a little bit tight in time. It's uh, two pairs of socks, one knee-high sock pair that has just added four rows. They're knitting two at a time. I will show them you, to you again. It's the Pippi Longstockings and my handspun socks. They didn't see much progress either. I've been taking this with me everywhere and knitting as much as I could. I've been working a lot on a new web shop, so I haven't had a lot of knitting time. And also I have a new toy because with only that as a whip, we're already at the acquisitions part. The new toy will wait. I will first show you my new project bag. Oh, I'm so happy with it. It's yellow and it has cats. And it is by my friend Angela from the Yarn and Yarns shop in Penarth. And she is also Rainbow Ange on Instagram. And she also has a podcast, Yarn and Yarns podcast. And she makes project bags under the name The Little Orange Cat. Her cat is called Newt and I'm really looking forward to meeting her in this October. And she was super kind and gifted me a few extra stitch markers that match the bag. I mean, look at the colors. It matches perfectly. And she showed this project bag in her podcast. And then I, I watched like two weeks later or something. And I wrote him and said, do you still have that project? I need it in my life. So, yeah, I can finally start using it. I already always save things to keep them nice and crisp. But now I can use it. Hooray. I can't cast on another project, but oh well. Then I have my new toy. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, this is an old camera bag and in here I have got my electric eel wheel nano. Oh yeah. This is a spinning wheel and it fits in my hand. Isn't that amazing? Oh god, it's so lovely. Um, what can I say? I uh, joined the Kickstarter and I finally got it. I had to pay a big ransom at customs, but I don't care. It's here and it works. At uh, first, it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. 
it didn't take up the yarn because my leader got in these little flyer hooks and then everyone got their nano and the videos and the information and everything came loose in the Facebook and Ravelry group for the electric eel wheels and yeah that was just perfect one lovely lady um, her nickname is Vampy uh, posted a few video tutorials and one of that was to make it more silent that really helped my spinning. Uh, being more silent also made the motor efficient because if it doesn't uh, wobble, knock or um, have any friction anywhere, it can just run smoothly. And now it runs very smoothly and as you can see, I can actually even spin pretty thin on this thing. And I don't even have to crank it up to full speed yet. I'm not that fast of a uh, spinner drafting. That's the word I was looking for. Um, this one is already my second bobbin. The bobbins came like this, just to show you. You have to assemble them, which is pretty nice because now I can just throw them in like this. They take up a lot less space and what also um, was in the group, you can just attach your leader in between when you assemble the bobbin. You can just pop it in between. That makes this bit stick pretty well. And the other one end usually sticks pretty well as well. I mean, this one is already rock solid. The other one is a bit twisty and loose, but if you put the leader in between it, like, perfect. Because if it moves, it will twist and it won't take up the yarn on the bobbin. All those things you find out. There's a lot of mods available for this little wheel, like twisting the arms, which I did. So the there's no snagging with those little metal hooks. And, um, we put some felt in between some parts so it would lie, lie better in the casing. Um, I don't know all the English names for the parts, so I'm sorry for that. Um, the first bobbin I finished was from a handmade bed by myself. Um, I did that during Tour de Fleece. I made that pink and purple bed and I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think I like spinning with my own handmade bats. I have no clue why. I have spun with other people's bats, bought bats, perfectly fine. I love them, but my own. Maybe they're just too boring because it's only merino with a tiny bit of sparkle and other bats had also silk and extras in it. So I'm gonna try those as well. But for now, I'm going to stick with all the other stuff I have found. I did some stash diving and I came up with this whole bag of miscellaneous. I have this little tri-bump, I think it's merino with a little bit of Firestar and that one was from the spinner stash. I also have a Rolex underneath that little bit of fiber already and I have noticed I really love spinning with Rolex. See I have some bits where I only have one Rolex. I'm going to spin it all in one go as singles and then do a three ply, a chain ply and probably break off the singles every time I have to change the fiber just because I like the mini skeins and not one big franken skein because I'm not good at that. I wouldn't be using it probably. So, so far this is a cute little toy. It won't be my main wheel, just because it it won't be my main wheel. I have my bliss. I have set my eyes on something pretty, and that might become my second wheel. Uh, I know my husband is against that, but he saw it and he was like, "Oh, that's really nice and small." Yeah, it is, hun. It is. It's a Louette uh, Victoria. It's a treble size wheel, so. 
It will make it easier for me to take my spinning wheel to a friend and have our spin together. So that's why I am looking at that. So then I have another spinning acquisition or spinning related. It is this cutable, uh, cutable, cute llama llama duck bag. So llamas on the outside and duck fabric on the inside. And this is a running gag on Sock Madness and the Tour de Vlies uh, in the Madness Forever group. And this bag is by Fiber Rachel. And since Fiber Rachel lives in Enschede, we had a very nice lunch where I got this because I won this as a prize in the Tour de Vlies in the Sock Madness group or the Madness Forever group as it is called during the Tour de Vlies. So, it's nice and sturdy and it's a really nice bag for all my spinning stuff. It probably even fits my Nano, but I have another bag for that and then I can just put in all the fiber in this one. So, this is the fiber. Well, not that one, that's an empty bag already. This is the fiber I have on my list. And I am halfway, I just forgot to get the bobbin. Um, this is by Purpose Fur. It is leaf peepers and it's 100% Falkland. And it spins like a dream, seriously. This is my next bit, I draft, pre-drafted already. And look at that go. It's got a really nice staple length, so it, it's almost spinning itself. I am doing a two-ply fractal spin with this. That means the first half I did was um, half of the braid lengthwise and then split into sections again lengthwise. And the first half I'm spinning now is just the first half in full. And that's why I pre-drafted a bit because it's a bit tight. It's a bit much and it's a bit bunched up so I have to open it, pre-draft it a bit so it, it's easier to spin and I also took my wheel to my friend and someone said well, on a bliss you can't really spin that fine my friend said give me your wheel it was a good thing I took all my bobbins instead of just the one I was working on and seriously my friend is really the spinning guru I also had a lesson from her. I hope you can see it because the color is a bit like my hand, but this is a two ply. And this was her just not really trying her normal. And then she said, oh, I'm gonna do a little bit extra. I'm gonna try a little bit harder. And this people is called frog hair. Yeah, there. <laughs> this is also a two-ply, which is like even half of what the previous one was. So, yes, you can spin very thin. The way you do it is you just spin really, really fast. I never knew that. You, you put the brake off, you just let it hang loose on it so there's no pull, and then you can apparently spin really thin. I'm still amazed. Seriously, she is a real guru. Absolutely not my cup of tea spinning that way. Because um, I went there and she showed me that I was spinning actually too fast. So I had way too much twist in my yarn. That was the first time I went there for my spinning lesson. And since then I changed my wheel into a double straddle and since then I can just really relax instead of doing this. And if I do this, I go down very hard so it comes up easier. It's my swimming feet. <laughs> they don't let me go easy. And now I do this and it goes very easy. So very slowly and I can just get the twist uh, amount I want. So. Um, that bit was for the, hand, for the uh, colorful spin along. I um, have found a few prizes. I have mentioned them in the group already. Um, stitch markers, hand dyed fiber, 
uh, I have a wonderful donation from uh, Zoe of Pins and Needles UK who donated a pattern of choice for the winner. Um, super kind. Um, for those of you who don't know what the colorful spin along is, it is a year, almost year long spin along where you set yourself a goal and for me it is to spin a braid a month until the next Tour de Fleece and not let my wheel get put in a corner. I have a few plans what I want. I have seen at my friend because she wrote an article for Ply Magazine about sock yarn and durability of sock yarn, hand spun sock yarn. I have a few plans now. I uh, have that Ply Magazine, but seeing it in person and feeling the swatches, how it feels, like, okay, made it click a lot better. So my next spin will be a two ply sock yarn. And the one after that will be a fractal three ply. So going to try all the things. Um, yeah, you can see maybe my wheel just next to the couch here. Um, it hasn't been touched that much. I still have a bit to go. Um, but I hope I can manage to finish that one braid in August. Uh, yeah, my nano is also keeping me busy, of course, so it's taking up time from the bliss, but that's fine. Then, um, that was all the acquisitions already. There's one I can't show you, the new undercover order colorway. It's not September yet, so the August one is, is keeping uh, kept hidden and secure uh, for those who didn't get it yet. Um, then I have a coupon code from my friend Monique from frogpeakcreations.etsy.com. It's colorful15 for 15% off. And then I have my shop news. So the new shop will open next week. Come hell or high water, that shop will open this month. Um, sign up for the newsletter. There is a new link for that down below in the description box. I have to um, make it still so it works. I have some trouble with Bitly, so you have to pay to change your link. And I am not willing to pay that much to change my link. I'd rather delete it. So, um, I have a new newsletter subs uh, subscription thingy. There's also the option to subscribe on the web shop page to get a notification from Shopify when the shop opens. And then the new newsletter thing will be in the bottom of the page. I am uh, almost finished with adding most of the products. There will always be products that I forget. And there won't be many stitch markers because I have to retake all those photos still. But I thought yarn is more important than stitch markers. Um, I might just add some stitch markers with old photos, but those will be renewed afterwards. Because, well, on Etsy it's nice to have your logo on every photo so people can just see which shop they belong to. They remember your name better. But to have your own website with your big logo on top every time and then you have your logo on every photo as well is a bit much. So I had to retake every photo because of course I couldn't find all the originals. I have found a few like from the mini skeins. I didn't have to retake all those which was good. But then uh, all the other photos have been retaken. All the yarn photos are new. And some colors are a real pain in the ass. And I am retaking them this weekend for the fourth time. Because I can't get the color to show as they are. It really, really is not the best job. Um, but with that, um, you can just visit colorfulcreativity.nl and the newsletter link down below. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and you will see all the notification there if you want and don't want to sign up for the newsletter. I will just shout it out when it is open. Um, with that, I am going to leave you because my 30 minutes are up and I hope to see you again really soon and hope 
you all are well and take care. Bye-bye.